Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the place to be each and every Sunday night where tonight we come to you from the home of Japanese racing here at Suzuka Grand Prix Circuit where the F1's ran around today. But the main game's here tonight on Top Split TV with uh, the Skippy Show rolling around in a foggy Suzuka. So I guess we'll find out what... Uh, what that looks like but we are here for round four of season 34 of sunday night lights i'm your host alex mckellar and joining me as always is the chaotic one mr Corey steinhauser Corey, she's a bit foggy out there but no doubt these guys will put on a good show regardless oh absolutely alex we're just uh probably glad that it's not heavy rain like uh suzuka is prone to even though skippies don't have uh, the ability to drive in the rain just yet but uh, a fantastic grand prix circuit here suzuka international and uh it should be quite the challenge especially with these foggy conditions some of those blind corners are even blinder now and with a 47 39 strength of field uh it should be pretty interesting yeah not many races split this week but uh it's a great skippy track uh but i think tonight we do have a split so numbers will be down a little bit but uh the pace will be up uh, and the quality as well speaking of which pace and quality let's run through our field adam miles is car number one here the current reigning defending snl champion uh going down the order then uh team torpedoes tim hendrickson the flying dutchman in the blue and orange mobile is out there as car number two captain 499 who was on the podium for the season who is, for generally stupid and slow racing, Neil Gardner joins us once again, the leading ANZ driver in terms of the seedings. Jeff Randall, who's been a very strong performer, currently leading this season after three rounds. He's car number four for Gone Skip and Racing. Car number five, Daniel Otuga. Expect to see him perform pretty well here. A strong racer. The other Dane, uh, in the absence of the great Dane in the Doggermobile, uh, Otuga looking to fly the flag there. Yannick Morale, car number six from France, becoming very much uh, a regular figure here on a Sunday night. Great to see Yannick out and about. And then the head clown is car number seven for Team Clowns, Vasco Sorosky. Uh, he's had a couple of strong performances in recent times. Uh, hasn't had a chance to do too many laps here tonight, uh, this week, Corey, but uh, won the warm-up race. Uh, so maybe that's his thing now. Yeah, well, it was uh, quite the interesting battle between himself and Randall. And Randall just made one mistake on the last lap. And uh, Vasco, ever the opportunist, went in and got the win. Brian Kelly uh, from the Midwest. He's car number eight here tonight. And uh, he had an unfortunate um, spin uh, coming out of the hairpin on lap one in the warm-up race and uh, caused a bit of chaos there. Uh, so he'll be looking to improve after losing a whole bunch of eye rating. Uh, we've got Yone Zorek from Central Eastern Europe. He's car number nine as uh, he's just started his first lap. Uh, we've got Craig Biley from Oz NZ, car number 10. And uh, I can barely actually see his car <laughs> amongst all this fog on the main straight. Uh, we've got Masahiro Kubuta from Japan. Uh, he is car number 11. Gregory Adams, the second clown in the field, sneaking in from Oz NZ, car number 12. And uh, the last one just sneaking in with a, uh, a 27.90 I rating, can you believe it, from Iberia is Damien Alvarez as car lucky number 13, Alex. Yeah, that's it. Don't let that number fool you, uh, fool you the I rating. Alvarez has pace for days. Uh, can be chaotic at times, but uh, can steer a skippy with outstanding speed. So... Yeah, looking forward to seeing how he goes on debut, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, look out uh, look out to see him near the pointy and if he can stick a time on. Uh, now, Hendrickson looks like he's getting pretty close. Alvarez as well to setting times. Just trying to... No, no, just trying to get set. Yeah, no, we're reset. All right, there we go. So they're still coming around for their first laps and two laps here of course the second one will be marginally faster only marginally depending on how you put together your first lap Corey. usually with a long gp circuit like this you gain a fair bit in the second second lap but just not the case so much at the moment 
Yeah, uh, I think it's the, uh, the tight twisty nature of this um, first sector here at this track. It really gets your tyres into that operating temperature window that is absolutely perfect. So uh, that's why it's only a marginal increase there on the, uh, the second lap. Um, but uh, it looks like Hendrickson is going to be the first one to uh, come towards the finish line as he's just making his way through the triangle at the moment, the Casio triangle, and out of the final corner. And uh, of course, he's going to go to P1 provisionally. But uh, let's see what kind of a lap time we get out of him. And uh, it's going to be a 2.25.1 to kick things off here tonight, Alex. My goodness, this is going to make hard viewing with the fog, that's for sure. Uh, Sorovsky, though, just pipped by Randall uh, and Miles now as the times start to tumble. Otuga with a... Well, he had purple momentarily in the final sector, but things are moving fast here. This track, not one to hang around, uh, but uh, because the, the lap is quite so long, uh, if you don't get a wriggle on, you will miss out. But, uh, yeah, everything uh, coming together for Miles at the moment. Current reigning champion with 24-4 on his first lap. Kubotas currently sitting in seventh as car number 11. He, uh, the lone Japanese driver, has done some great uh, racing here this week. thought we might, might see some more Japanese pe folks driving around this week at Suzuka, but uh, Kubota has been flying the flag very capably. Uh, and at the moment, sitting in seventh as car number 11 with the second lap to come there, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And uh, I was actually expecting uh, maybe a, a late one-off appearance from uh, Nagai-san, but I guess not. But uh, it looks like Hendrickson's making his way uh, towards Spoon Curve at the moment. And uh, he has a big gap to everyone behind him on track as they sit. And uh, it looks like he's just absolutely flying here at the moment, Alex. He's uh, just got so much pace here at the moment. Yeah, look, we'll soon see. Hendrickson, I haven't seen him run too many races here this week, but uh, often doesn't need, of course, another champion returning to our ranks or former champion i should say uh as you say he's leading the way on this second lap coming down to hit 130r i'm calling it pirates bend here this week because the pirates love it 130r you know what it means Corey, right <laughs> sorry yeah, bad. I, I, that, <laughs> that goes that, out that to the clowns that one bad <laughs> yeah, I know. it goes out to the clowns i love it it's all good but hendrickson coming through the final pair of chicanes well, final pair of corners in the triangle. Uh, rounds the final court. Keeps it tight. Uh, we kind of see him in the fog there. What's he done? He's done a purple last sector. Drops himself on pole, Corey. Great work. Yeah, that's uh, awesome work there for Tim. As uh, we're waiting for the rest of the cars to start making their way across the line now. Brian Kelly moves up into second. And Adam Miles has gone to the top a 24-0 at the moment. And uh, it looks like there's all but one to finish. And uh, these guys just, as a big group, came across the line there. But Adam Miles stonking them all at the moment, Alex. Yeah, that's it. With barely 10 seconds to spare, he's dropped a 24 flat. So not a huge improvement, as we said. I think it was only about four tenths, but it was enough to secure his spot on the front row. Uh, as Quali comes to a close, let's check out the grid. For tonight's big one, season 34, round four from Suzuka. Uh, Adam Miles with 24 flat, drops it on pole for, for the UK and I club. Uh, Team Torpedoes, Tim Hendrickson, the Dutchman uh, alongside him in second, some 54 one thousandths off the top spot. Daniel Otuga from Scandinavia starts out a third alongside him at a more reasonable time. I think it's about 6.15 after the change, daylight savings in the morning over there in the US of A, where Brian is. But Kelly starts out a fourth. Jeff Randall for Gone Skip and Racing for UK and I out a fifth. Alongside him will be the head clown uh, for Team Clowns, Vasco Sorovsky, leading the way for the ANZ drivers. Uh, Masahiro Kubota, Kubota-san from Japan, uh, representing the Japanese drivers here in Japan at Suzuka. Starting out of seventh, starting out of eighth from France. France will be Yannick Morale. Ninth off the grid will be Yerne Zorek for right foot breakers. Alongside him, another ANZ driver in Craig Biley out of 10th. Uh, generally stupid and slow driver 
Neil Gardner starts out of 11th. 12th will be the other clown in the field. Uh, Greg Adams. And our final driver, having not set a time, uh, will be Damien Alvarez from Iberia. But as I said, Corey, expect him to move forward from there would be my money because he's got lightning pace and likes to likes to have a race at the same time. Yeah, absolutely, Alex. And uh, I can't wait to see what he can do with uh, so much room on this track as well. Such a long track. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what he can do as he fights his way through the field. We're still just waiting on uh, Alvarez to jump onto the grid to join everyone else. So uh, we're just patiently waiting, but uh, we've got 10 laps around here. Same distance as what we do at Bathurst. And uh, with the about two and a half minute uh, lap times, it'll be about a 25 minute race. It looks like Alvarez is going to start from the pits. The red lights mean rev, the green lights mean go. We are underway and they start charging their way now down into turn one and very aggressive right from the outset adam miles as he cut across the nose of tim hendrickson there at the start of the race alex as you say alvarez out of the pits but didn't cost him too much he's just on the back of this pack here not by much actually so jumping back up to the front we've got miles hendrickson otuga kelly and randall arguing over positions there not compromising too much all as they started in the running order as they go through the S's the first time round. This unique set of right, left, right, left, right. Uh, soldiers marching through the second sector as they come up over the hill. Uh, again through uh, turn seven. Great fun as they run down to the Degners for the first time. This sketchy bit, particularly on cold tyres. Corey can bring your race undone very quickly. That's right, Alex. It's very easy to carry too much speed into them and also very easy to carry not enough speed. Uh, that's uh, usually my problem because I'm slow, but uh, I digress. Uh, as everyone makes their way down to the hairpin for the first time, this is where Brian Kelly had his incident in the warm-up race. And it looks like for uh, everyone, they got through it smoothly. No one getting on the gas too hard and spinning it out in front of the pack, Alex. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, all very uh, gentlemanly, uh, very orderly, as everyone fearful of losing the draft. But we have one long line of 13 skippies as we go through Spoon for the first time. Again, one long line of skippies just maintaining draft. Oh, we lost Biley by looks at side by side on exit. Wow, that was massive. That was Adams and Alvarez. Alvarez get the elbows out early on the exit of Spoon. He's got past. He's got two. Biley's gone. Let's see what happened to Biley. Uh, see what happened on the entry to Spoon, I think it was. The rear may go here. Yeah, there it is. Surprisingly um, uh, slippery here. Uh, this week in the early stages at uh, Suzuka as the move's been made. Hendrickson's gone through on miles. Uh, it's pretty much that in the spin and a couple of moves by Alvarez is all we got and that's about all we can see at the moment. How's the fog, Corey? Oh, the fog is incredible here, especially on the front straight because it's such a long straightaway and the, uh, the camera position for me is down in turn one. So <laughs> I really don't get to see much of uh, front straight action. But uh, nose to tail, our top five go as uh, it's actually our top four. Uh, Jeff Randall on the back of it, just barely holding on to uh, some resemblance of draft as they go through. Uh, I'm going to call this just the Giants chicane section. I know it's got an actual name, but I can't remember it at the moment. But uh, these drivers uh, are at the very limit in this section. So it's a whole bunch of left, right, left, right. It's very easy to uh, just overstep the mark and run wide and uh, leave the door open for the cars to come up behind you, Alex. Yeah, that's it. I think it's called the Snake Curves or similar from memory, but uh, Degna's is where we find our lead pack at the moment. Jeff Randall looking to maintain position on the back of a breakaway group of five after uh, Sorosky, who's dropped right back. I'm guessing picked up a slowdown because I saw as they crossed the line or came down the front straight at least, he was falling well back. And I suggest it was probably due to a slowdown because he doesn't look like... Oh, he's, no, he's actually got a bit of rear wing uh, damage. So I might go and see if I can find what that was about, Corey. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe a little bit of contact going into the Casio triangle there. 
So uh, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I didn't see it, and it hasn't popped up on any of my software about where uh, he had some contact. But our uh, top five now have just made their way through the spoon curve now down the uh, the GT uh, pit straight as it looks like Adam Miles is going to try and go for an outside move on Hendrickson before they reach 130R. Of course, uh, called 130R because it is uh, a radius of 130. 130 what? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, they make their way through it cleanly and uh, they're making their way down to the Casio Triangle now. And uh, we're going to end off lap number two here with Adam Miles leading the way from Tim Hendrickson, Alex. Yeah, that's it. I'm guessing degrees. 130 degrees, but oh my goodness, it's not 130 degrees, judging by the fog. Let's uh, see if we can't see what happened to Sarovsky. He's already wobbling there, so that's not it. I'm guessing he might have copped a bit of a, uh, a love tap on the braking zone into the Casio triangle, the final chicane there. Meanwhile, Hendrickson goes through once again. Otuga sitting in third. Great to see Otuga in the front pack. Uh, I'm just trying to find Alvarez is only up two and he's being he's in a battle with Kubota at the moment and Adams Adams oh Kubota and Alvarez hip and shoulders Alvarez comes back oh runs a bit wide and runs him out of road the two of them getting quite aggressive through the S's Alvarez comes away with the chocolates out of that little battle meanwhile Adams is cheering because he's up two positions into the top 10, into the points. And, uh, yeah, look out. Here we go. So the action was thick and fast there, deep in the pack. Alvarez is starting for the pitch. Uh, from the pits, I should say. Not from the pitch. Wrong game. I Meanwhile, our front five just... I'm not going to say sedately running around, but they're uh, certainly keeping things a lot calmer up front, Corey. Oh, absolutely, Alex. These guys are just focused on trying to build the gap to the second pack right now, uh, being led by Morale, uh, who is in uh, P6 there. And uh, it looks like there's a little bit of battle starting to form between Sorosky and Zorek. As you can see, uh, Sorosky taking a wider line there, uh, coming out of the hairpin. They were a little bit side by side, and uh, Sorosky had the, uh, the momentum initially, but that inside line for Zorek really helped him out there as uh, these guys are starting to drop Gardner off in the pack. Gardner, 1.3 seconds back from Sorosky. So he's not going to have the draft as they come along the GT uh, pit straight. And uh, going into 130R, it looks like Zorek is going to try and have a move at morale here going into 130R, Alex. Yeah, not uncommon to see as they get it sorted. Uh, I would suggest morale lifted there to uh, keep it clean through there or keep the risk down at least uh, meanwhile back up front um, the order is as it has been a few times now oh my gosh surely kill. there we go maybe we'll take that camera angle down the main straight so we can actually see something before they drive right past us although they're not the exit of it it's not, not much better I don't know anyway the last time I think we had fog like this was uh into Lagos and uh, Brazil a few years ago and it was just a nightmare anyway we'll do our best folks can't do much about the weather imagine when the rain comes Corey I wonder what that's going to be like to broadcast oh I reckon that's going to be uh, a little bit more fun we'll probably lose cars in the spray but uh you know the the interesting racing of uh rain racing especially with the skippies since they got a little bit of downforce about them should be interesting uh when we do eventually get rain whenever that may be but uh, the battle at the front is starting to intensify as Ortuga is starting to look for uh, little chinks in the armor for Adam Miles. Notice he was just running slightly more inside, going through the uh, the Snake S's, uh, just trying to look for any chink in the armor there of Adam Miles as uh, now they're heading down towards the hairpin. And uh, will we get any moves of position here? No, everyone keeping it fairly clean. Although Jeff Randall came in there like a bat out of hell. And uh, I think that's the way that he's keeping up with this pack at the moment. Alex is uh, just relying on having superior deep breaks uh, compared to everyone else. Yeah, a bit of compression uh, in the corners uh, on the tail end of a pack doesn't hurt either. Though Randall's had good pace all season. In fact, the, the latter half. Oh, look at the rotation, the attack of Hendrickson coming through Spoon. That was very nice to watch. Uh, nah, Randall's had pace uh, since he's come back. Oh, hang on. We've lost uh, Zorek. 
What's happened here? Zorak. Oh, Sorosky and Zorak have come together. Sorosky's pulled up and held. Oh, wow, Zorak. Oh, my gosh. Alvarez is gone. He's got to hold the brakes and take your medicine, mate. Alvarez gone. Oh, the Kubota's gone as well. Oh, my goodness. Christmas cards. Draw a line through. You're not getting as many this this. This year, I don't think. I don't, oh, gee, I, I'd have to go back and have another look, but um, yeah, not great. Anyway, uh, back up front. Oh, I'm going to change the camera here, see him a bit closer. Uh, and now we see Hendrickson going in. So, what's Otuga going to do this time round? Is he going? Yeah, he's going to make it three wide into turn one. Plenty of room here at turn one. Hendrickson's pushes wide, comes in. A little bit of hip and shoulder there going through. Miles trying to come back this side by side. Through the exit of turn two, coming up the run to the S's now. Otuga left to go around the outside. He will be looking to go back line astern. Managed to get it sort of briefly. As you say, he takes the, uh, the tighter attacking angle into the corners, which sort of closes the door on the inside, but potentially compromises his exit speed through this series of left-right corners. But gets sort of takes a more traditional line to the re along with the rest of the drivers on the exit up the hill through seven, and then has equal speed through the Degners. So challenging because you want to push wide on the exit of the first Degner, but then it's so unsettled on the on the curbs. You got to get settled very quickly uh, to get set for the second Degner. Crucial corner as you come into the hairpin. And they've got it sorted once again. But great start to lap five. Uh, of course, we'll be coming to half race distance when we close this lap out, Corey. That's absolutely right, Alex. As, uh, these guys are already starting to turn up the wick a bit, especially Ortuga. And uh, you can already tell he's looking for a way to try and get around Hendrickson already. He might have to wait until we get to the GT pit straight as we go through Spoon Curve once more. And Ortuga ran a little bit wider there so he could get a much entry into the second half of uh, Spoon Curve. And let's see what they got as uh, they head towards 130R. Very defensive is Hendrickson as uh, the camera angle does not favour me there. And it looks like Hendrickson moved to the outside lane. It let Ortuga have the inside and Adam Miles trying to get up there as well. All over the curb was Adam Miles and Hendrickson does the switch back, trying to get to the outside of Ortuga as they head to the Casio Triangle. And this invites all kinds of battling into this as Brian Kelly under attack from Jeff Randall as well. And they've made contact as Randall got shoved off into the uh, the kitty litter there. And now the top three have broken away from fourth and fifth as they're still battling very hard as they go down the front straight. Three wide is how they're going to go heading towards turn one. This time Hendrickson on the outside. And Miles up the inside, Ortuga stuck in the middle, and he has uh, lifted there to uh, allow these two to battle their way through turn one, Alex. Yeah, that's it. Let's go check out what happened in that final part of the, the chicane there. Looks like a little bit unsettled for Kelly. Maybe pushes out wider than uh, was expected. And uh, that, yeah, yeah, that's I think he just got unsettled on that penultimate curb there. Uh, that happens, unfortunately, but I'm not sure. Depending how the front guys race. Well, Kelly's back into it. He's on the back there. They're going side by side into the Degnus for the first time on lap six. They managed to get it done. That'll bring Randall back into it. Side by side, our leaders go again through the second Degnus. Wasn't expecting this till much later in the race, but it's still going side by side. The one and two of Miles and Hendrickson into the hairpin. Miles lifts out. Oh, the inside line. You had to be very careful there not to run into the rear of the Flying Dutchman. But fantastic driving them for our leaders, Corey. Oh, absolutely, Alex. They were side by side throughout the entire S's section. So uh, the racing has been absolutely intense right now between Hendrickson and Miles. Ortuga won't want to sit back there in third. He's already looking for ways around on the entry to Spoon. And uh, 130R is the next overtaking opportunity. We have a group of five once more as Jeff Randall used those big breaks in the uh, the hairpin to catch right back up to the back of Kelly. And uh, I just noticed off in the background, Yannick Morale starting to creep up on these guys a little bit. He's still 
uh, quite a fair way back. But uh, he could, in theory, if these guys keep battling like this, uh, end up being on the back of this pack and have a six-car battle pack here for the lead, Alex. Yeah, potentially. These guys racing harder side by side into the final chicane. Our leaders go once again and looking to pounce his Otuga back to a pack of five. Side by side they go. Perhaps dress rehearsal for the final lap. Guys testing out their lines, where they go, where they want to position. Otuga now swings outside. Oh, Kelly's going to make it four wide, potentially. Otuga shuts that idea down. Oh, but yeah, it looks like they are briefly. Almost four wide. Three wide, three wide. One replaced. Oh, Hendrickson, will he catch that? Oh, he's kind of caught it. Is he hanging on? He'll have the pace to catch up if they keep battling. I didn't see any contact, Corey. Just look, it got loose on the outside of the three wide there. Yeah, I think uh, Hendrickson caught the marbles there, and uh, that's what got him a little bit sideways. He's got a lot of ground to try and make up now. He lost uh, almost two seconds to these guys now. Uh, the gap between uh, Randall and Hendrickson is uh, to the point of uh, 1.4 seconds at the moment. So uh, Hendrickson has a lot of catching up to do. He's actually closer to morale than he is to Randall, which is uh, a crazy thought. But if anyone can catch back up, it's definitely going to be Hendrickson. And uh, if he drags morale up there as well, because morale just on the coattails of the draft, this could be a very interesting last uh, three and a half laps, Alex. Yeah, that's right. Uh, interesting. Interesting. May have been a little bit of contact. Not sure. Didn't catch it, but certainly uh, Hendrickson is now 1.6 behind. These guys won't hold back, though. We saw uh, Randall get back on in touch with these guys, Brandall and Kelly. Uh, I expect some battling. Oh, uh, Otuga. Randall goes up the inside of Kelly there on the uh, entry into Spoon. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, amazing stuff at this point of the race. Uh, tail end of lap 7 130 hour. what does it bring us this time round uh, Hendrickson actually losing time he's uh, dropped 3 4 tenths uh, from the lead lead pack this time round but this will bring him back in surely 2 by 2 by 2 they go through 130R they've got it sorted though Miles back on front Otuga in second Kelly and Randall are going to try it again this time it's uh, Randall on the inside apex of the the penultimate corner they get it done smoothly what's that done for Hendrickson that's caught him up close enough to half a second that uh, two by two action uh, morale not any closer he's still 1.3 behind Sorovsky is uh, similarly a fair way behind with uh, Neil Gardner in tow these guys two by two Randall and Kelly this time round uh, again Kelly Possibly taking the wide line just to arrest a bit of speed so they don't lose too much time. But dangerous games being played there because they're half a second off the back. Uh, and uh, Hendrickson is now 1.4 and closing. A bit between the teeth, no doubt, Corey. Oh, absolutely. He would not have a, uh, liked getting that sideways going through turns one and two. And he will be doing everything in his power to try and catch back up because Hendrickson doesn't like to lose. We know that he, he loves to win, and that's his main thing, but uh, he also loves a good battle. If he catches back up to these guys before we run out of laps, the battle is probably going to be pretty epic as uh, down towards the hairpin we go once more. And let's see if we get any sneaky moves up here, because the hairpin, even though it's a big braking zone, it is an overtaking opportunity as Randall uh, just about got into the back of Ortuga there on the entry to the hairpin as now they go through the long sweeping turn number 12. This is probably one of the longest corners at this circuit uh, just because it is a continuous right-hand turn for uh, what seems like a, a very long time. And into Spoon, Randall not going to have the opportunity to uh, get the overtake there on Ortuga because uh, Ortuga, he's, uh, he's a very early apex kind of turn in for uh, most of these corners. So he's very aggressive with the turn in there, Alex. Yeah, that's it. Each of them uh, that taking advantage of the width of this track uh, to pick different lines as they took a forces round. Oh, contact on the straight. They've all, they've all caught it. How do they all manage to come out of that with wheels in the right direction? 
Contact left, right, and centre. The front three now. Brian Kelly looking to get involved. Will he make it three wide into the final chicane? No, he won't. Randall and Otuga. A little bit of contact in between the apexes. A little bit of contact on the exit of the quarter as well. They've got it done. What's the risk, though? Miles running off into the distance. Hendrickson starting to approach in the background. Oh, the fog killing me tonight. But Randall, oh, my goodness. Oh, the fog is dead set killing me. I can't find an angle. Anyway, these guys now, they've lost miles. It's now a race for second. Randall, Kelly, Otuga, Hendrickson surely will get involved in here, but miles is off to the races, Corey. That's right, Alex. We've only got two laps to go now. As you can see, the moves from Brian Kelly. He's trying to make moves through the S's. That's not normally where we see overtakes happen. Otuga, similarly. Getting very aggressive here on the entry to the corners. Hendrickson is well and truly back into this battle. And they're not out of it yet with Miles. Miles is just 1.2 up the road, maybe 1.2 and a half. So there is still a chance that they could catch him. But uh, the chances of them actually getting to him are very slim now. And Adam Miles is probably grinning from ear to ear, knowing that he possibly has this one sewn up right now, Alex. Yeah, that's it. I reckon there's every chance. Right, my money's almost on Hendrickson to grab P2 uh, with two laps to go. He's right in this. Although these guys are right. Oh, Hendrickson throws it up the inside, hugs the apex, gets the first one done. He is right back into it. He'll have the inside to spoon, but will he have enough to counter Otuga's draft around this long sweeping right-hander that you called before? Corey, no, he won't, is the answer. But will he throw it up the inside of Spoon? Or the outside, maybe even. Heavens above. No, he'll back out and wait for 130 Rs. Otuga attacks that apex, as you've called a couple of times here tonight. Corey, interestingly, it hasn't cost those two on the back of this pack any time, as Randall and Kelly have fallen. No, they haven't, they haven't lost any time to Miles either. Still the 1.3. But the thing will be... With two laps to go, uh, they will be battling through 130-hour. Miles will take the racing line, uh, as, and he'll be pulling away. As side by side, they go once again. Randall and Kelly through 130-hour. They'll be side by side. Oh, what are they going to do? Three wide here briefly. Yes, they will. Then they shape up to two. Look at this squadron of Skippy through the final chicane. It's like the uh, the red, uh, red Arrows, is it? Uh, one of the synchronized flying squadrons that you see in the aircraft. Well, the uh, Air Forces around the world, Corey, plenty of action going on. Those guys got it done. Not a single piece of contact that I saw anyway. And Henderson got a two for one. But now they're three wide down the pit straight once more. It is the last lap. And these guys are putting it all on the table as Hendrickson has swooped around the outside of Kelly. And he will take the, uh, the second place here. But will he hold it? That's going to be the main question because the GT pit strike going into 130R is the next overtaking opportunity. And that's probably one that, honestly, Brian Kelly will be waiting for as they slide their way through the S's. The rear tyres certainly start to feel a bit of the hurt as these guys are pushing for everything they can get. Adam Miles off to the races. He's got a 1.8 second lead, so he's definitely not going to be touched unless he makes a mistake here at the end of the race, which I highly doubt he'll do because uh, Adam Miles, one of the, uh, the generally better races that we have, but these four are going to continue to battle it out for the podium. And let's see if we're going to get a big dive bomb move here going into the hairpin. Tim Hendrickson still leading the group. Randall has jumped out. He's gotten up onto the inside of Kelly, if you don't mind. And he's trying to push out as wide as he can, and he makes the move stick. But Kelly, with a little bit of extra momentum, was going to look to the outside, couldn't quite get there. And the battle is still absolutely on in earnest here, Alex, as uh, we only have one sector of the track left to go. Beautiful move by Randall there. Kelly coming back at him. Randall tries to close the door side by side through Spoons. And Otuga looking to make it three wide. Kelly gets the elbows out, gets it done. But that'll be Hendrickson going off to the races. One, two, finish for the one, two. Bladed vehicles, the, the rather three in this front pack potentially left to fight over the scraps as once again. Randall and Kelly go side by side. On the run to 130. Oh, they're still rubbing. They're still racing. Hendrickson gets clear. Randall go wide there. Oh, Tuga looks to come underneath into the final chicane. They're still almost three wide. 
A two go around the outside of Kelly. Hendrickson's clear. It'll be Linus turn. They go beautiful racing as Adam Miles looks to take out his victory here on Sunday night. Hendrickson again. Randall, Otuga and Kelly. Fantastic racing from all involved there. Morale didn't quite catch him in the end. Sorosky recovers only to P7 just ahead of Neil Gardner behind him. The other clown in the field is uh, caught up with Biley and Zorek there. Greg Adams, Kubota, after the racing with Alvarez, who looks like he's exited stage next race event somewhere as he's left the server. Uh, he and Kubota finish at the tail end of the field. Oh, check out the damn fog there. How you meant to see anything? Anyway, let's go check out our results. Maybe that'll show us something. There we go. Round four, season 34. Sunday Night Lights from Suzuka was taken out by Adam Miles, who uh, took advantage of the gap created by uh, some uh, heavy battling going on behind him. Uh, Adam Miles taking out his victory here tonight uh, ahead of Tim Hendrickson, who had a fantastic recovery. Uh, he was my pick in the last lap or so to finish second, and there he did after doing some spectacular manoeuvring to get through three cars at once almost. Team Torpedo there finishes in second. Jeff Randall for gone skipping racing continues his flurry of good results and no doubt hangs on to top spot in the standings as a result. Uh, da finishing in third, Daniel Otuga, uh, the Danishman, the, the Dutch, no, the Dane. There you go, the Dane. He finishes in fourth by Kelly uh, with a slightly more reasonable start to the morning. Uh, given the time changes, finishes with a top five finish with some spectacular racing that he could take uh, into SNS uh, in a in a little while, a few hours time. Yannick Morale, the Frenchman, finishes in sixth, uh, only a second and a half off that top five battle in the end. Vasco Sorosky, the head clown for Team Clowns, finishes in seventh tonight. Only lost one position, but uh, yeah, it was an eventful night by the looks of it. Uh, but he had a bit of a race there. With generally stupid and slows, Captain 499, Neil Gunn, who finished in 8th. Craig Biley, the other ANZ driver, uh, finished in 9th. Uh, with UNA Zorek, a right foot breakers in 10th and in tow. Uh, and the final ANZ driver, the other clown in the field, Greg Adams, down there in 11th. With Kubota, the Japanese hope, uh, down five spots in 12th. With Alvarez, uh, our only retirement for the evening there. Corey down in uh, lucky 13th. He was lucky 13th. He was uh, car 13, finished in 13th, and uh, yeah, called it a night early by the looks. Yeah, it looks like he's called it on lap three, seven laps down, which is uh, unfortunate. I was expecting a big fight through the pack from him, uh, as uh, you described, because it would have been uh, pretty awesome to see. But uh, awesome to see was that huge battle for second. Those four guys, um, Hendrickson, Randall, Ortuga, and Kelly. Uh, they put on an absolute show there, especially on that last lap. And uh, you called it. You said your money was on for Hendrickson to go from uh, P6 to P4 and, uh, sorry, P6 to P2. And he absolutely did. Yeah, that's it, mate. Sorry, folks. I forgot to hit my cough button. Anyway, uh, he absolutely did. Now, let's grab uh, our first person up for... Uh for interviews, we'll uh, we'll grab our race winner, Mr. Adam Miles. Adam, congratulations! Uh, bit of battling there, pretty pretty much from halfway through the race, uh, and then they they gave you a, a bit of a break, and uh, you stuck with it and took out the win, mate. Yeah, that's uh, good to my first SNL of the season, and came away with a win, so happy with that. Um, yeah, the first first I don't know what it was, four laps were smart i think there was a front pack of five who just just been able to lead over the rest of the group and then yeah it all kicked off i think when tim stayed on the inside of 130r around lap four or five and i thought okay right oh sorry i need to mute the uh sorry just to mute the sim uh yeah tim stuck it on the inside and i thought right this is this is where we go um and then yes i think daniel got involved brian got involved and then yeah it was that lap eight incident just for 130r which you know, was could so easily have been the death of three cars, but turned out to be a, a blessing in disguise for me. Yeah, that's it, mate. And that, that can be the risk versus reward. Uh, folks jockeying for position to move forward in a pack like that. 
uh, particularly in the early stages of the race. But part of it can be strategy too to unsettle drivers and maybe do exactly what uh, what was uh, rolled the dice your way tonight, which was to get a break. So, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And for yourself tonight, mate, not only was the speed there, but uh, the luck went your way, which is always good to see. But congratulations on a fantastic win, mate. Uh, great to have a returning champion get a good result like that on his first night out of the season. Do we get to see you, hopefully, for the full season this time around, mate? Uh, barring probably a couple of work trips. I fly to Tokyo on Thursday, so I'll be out for a week. So I won't be able to make uh, Ledenon for the next one, which is a shame. So I've done the done the time attack there, and that's a, a really different track for the Skippies. I mean, it's like a roller coaster going up and down, blind crest. So I'm, I'm, it's a real shame I'm going to miss that one. But... Generally, I think for the rest of the season, barring any other trips, I should be there for most of it. Yeah, nice, nice. And hopefully then you'll have a good shake at uh, defending the title, mate. But uh, I guess time will tell. When you've got to use the uh, the drop rounds for work, that can, uh, you know, hamper your chances a bit, right? It's got to be all or nothing yeah. each week. All right, mate. Well, congratulations. Great win out there tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see you again soon. But anyone uh, you'd like to give a shout out to tonight? Uh, yourself and Corey, a fantastic broadcast as always. I, I will inevitably watch it back and enjoy enjoy this one more than most. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah, beautiful. Thanks, mate. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks a lot. There you go, Corey. That was our race winner, uh, Adam Miles, first race of the season. He's one for one in terms of victories. Not a bad, not a bad way to go. Yeah, it's definitely a very solid strike record to uh, start off his season. But, uh, of course, uh, as he said, he's going to miss out next week, uh, which is uh, going to be a detriment because I think um, he's going to start losing drop rounds here to be able to use. Uh, I think that's going to be all of his drop rounds uh, used up there. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he can do for the rest of the season, whether he can make a charge for the championship or not. Uh, that will be one of the things we'll have to wait and see because uh, if he does... Uh, had the ability to make the charge for the championship, it's going to come down to the final round to see how the points shake out. Yeah, that's it, mate. Uh, work depending or notwithstanding. Uh, that sounds about right. Now, uh, another podium getter tonight. Uh, another podium, uh, indeed, for one uh, Jeff Randall. Congratulations, Jeff. Mate, she got a bit uh, a bit active there in the, in the second half of that one, didn't it? <laughs> It was a bit bumpy and bulgy, wasn't it? I thought I'd sit back for about five or six laps and just wait for wait for something to happen. Um, then it looked like nothing was actually happening, so I thought I'd try and try and make it move forwards, um, only to get bumped off at uh, the chicane <laughs> in no uncertain terms. Um, I, th I think I'd left plenty of room, but bang, I was shoved onto the grass. At that point, thought we were going to lose the top three, myself and Brian. Um, but fortunately, Brian got his head down. I got my head down. And we caught him back up again. Um, I need to get bumped off again for a second time at the chicane, this time by uh, Daniel. Um, but it was elbows out. Um, and for the championship side of things, I'm happy with third. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Good haul of points to uh, solidify yourself up the, the top of the, the current standings, which... Um... I think reflects well on the pace and the and the racing you've brought to us each week. So looking forward to seeing how that plays out over the season, noting that uh, current champion Adam Miles has got some uh, work challenges in terms of how it'll impact his attendance tonight being his first race. Shows he's still got it, though. He's up there with a win. But, no, nah, mate, great to see you back. <laughs> great to see you back out there. Uh, looks like you and hopefully are really enjoying it. Oh, loving it. Absolutely loving it. You know, it's it's great fun racing uh, on a on a Sunday, actually now a Sunday afternoon with you guys. Um, yeah, it's a couple of weeks ago. It was 10.15 in the morning. Now it's 12.15 in the afternoon. But um, that's that's ideal. It gives me a chance to wake up a bit more and, uh, yeah, get my head into gear. But, yeah, cracking, cracking racing. Absolutely love every second of it. Yeah, beautiful. All right, mate. Well, congratulations. Another podium for your good self. Anyone who'd like to give a shout out to tonight? Yeah, of course, you too, uh, Alex and Corey. Thank you guys for what you do. Um, fantastic broadcast. Like uh, like Adam said, I look forward to sitting down and watching it later. It's always good fun. But this time I've got to sit down and watch come third. Um, Adam's <laughs> looking forward to watching coming first. Yeah, that's <laughs> but, no, it. It's great. Look, it's great. I love it. Yeah, beautiful. All right, mate. Thanks for dropping in. Thanks for being here each week and putting on a great show. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
There you go, Corey. That was Jeff Randall. Another podium. And uh, can I tell you, the consistency is what wins out in these championships. And uh, Je uh, and uh, Jeff really uh, starting to rack up some good results consistently, which uh, really stands him in good stead. Oh, absolutely, Alex. Uh, I would believe that he'd be somewhere towards the uh, top, if not uh, currently number one in the point standings, uh, with just how consistent he has been this season and consistently at the front. Uh, it's great to see Jeff doing so well and uh, flying the flag uh, brilliantly out there. And uh, hopefully uh, we can see him uh, continue on this good results as the season progresses on, because uh, I reckon he's going to be in a very, very strong position uh, come towards the end of the season. Yeah, that's it, mate. Uh, putting together a good season is what it's all about. Uh, but a lot of risk in, uh, in that ra heavy racing that goes on up there, but a lot of fun as well. So, And if, uh, if, if fun's the reward, then the, the, the reward can be twofold. Uh, the, the, the risky and the rub and racing and also the results. So, yeah, good job there from Jeff. But that, uh, that might just about do us, folks. Uh, another great week of racing, smaller field here tonight, but uh, the racing up front was excellent as always. But Corey, do you want to tell the folks tonight what you got coming up this week? Uh, so the Winstell Racing League is back, and uh, that'll be first thing tomorrow morning for me. Uh, I have to wake up at 7 o'clock for it, but uh, that will be from the Martinsville Speedway, so it'll be a, a third gear fender bender race, uh, which is always a little bit of fun. Then on Wednesday at 11.35-ish uh, Western Australian time, I will be broadcasting the Output Racing League from the Texas Motor Speedway, and it's the newer layout with the two differing corners, so uh, it'll be an interesting 100 laps around there. Uh, on Friday, I'll be uh, participating in the Reverb Series race at uh, the Bullring. Uh, we're running uh, Wayland Modified Cars on that one. Uh, on Saturday night, I will be at the Pinjar Park Speedway for the Western Australian title for the Outlaw Carts. And uh, you can find the live stream for that one on uh, Saturday on the Speedway Memes Facebook page. And then back here next week with you, Alex, as we tackle uh, Lebanon. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, I, I can't remember if I've driven there or not, but uh, we'll find out during the week as we give it a crack. Otherwise, folks, thank you as always for joining us. Uh, the likes and the thumbs up and all the rest of it. Go check out the full catalogue uh, of SNL and MNL history over at the Top Split YouTube channel. We also do uh, stream this live in 1440p. But, of course, we'll be here next week, as Corey said, on the sacred home of the SNL broadcast here on Top Split TV. But until then, and on behalf of the Chaotic One, Mr. Corey Steinhauser, I'm Alex McKellar, and I will say ciao for now.